Hello and welcome into the word of the Lord today. I'm glad to share with you exactly what it is that is on the heart of God concerning you, specifically those of you who have made it a commitment of yours to receive from what's being poured out from this ministry. You make sure that you're connected to this ministry, whereas you tune in to every single message you go back after listening to the messages and your time with the lord you study what's being taught you go into the word of god allow the spirit to minister to you for those of you who are that connected to this ministry this word is going to be specifically for you but then again if you're new here if you have never seen me before if you've never heard of me before i want you to stick around because this is going to be for you too I'm going to actually say a prayer as well towards the end of this message is going to really activate certain things, very specific things in your life. And you are going to see it happen just like that because the word of God can never return back void. We're actually going to be going deep into scripture today concerning three very specific things. And here's the thing. I've already, I taught a message on something similar to this about a I was going to say a couple months ago, but it's been a few months ago. But the reason why we're going to be tackling it again, but I'm going to be going a lot deeper, um, is because, and I just had a thought that I'll get back to, is because when I was in prayer, I'm going to tell you that the Lord had downloaded this into me, and it was in this exact order, and I said, okay, well, I need to talk about their level, but specifically for you. Those of you, as I said, who are under this ministry, and if you're new here, then I encourage you to stick around because we're going to pray and this is going to be for you as well. But we're talking about three signs that your level is changing. And the reason I say it's for those of you specifically under this ministry is because when I'm praying, a lot of my prayer time is not about me. It's about this ministry. It's about those of you who are under this ministry. It's about the things that you're going to God for. I'm coming into agreement with you and i cover every single person a lot of times the lord will show me things that is happening for those of you but then there are some times where the lord will just lay on my heart to pray for specific things that needs to be prayed for and here's the thing i don't have to know the exact person that i'm praying for it could be a ton of you all it could be a couple hundred it could be a couple thousand i really don't know but i'm obedient to pray what the lord puts on my heart concerning you all so when i was in prayer Concerning this ministry and concerning um, the expansion of it, even those of you who are under the ministry, the Lord had downloaded into me that your level is changing. Your level is changing. So if you're if you're under the sound of my voice right now, your level is changing. And then I'm going to outline to you all how you know that your level is changing, how this is specifically for you, which I'm going to tell you that it is. And if you've never seen me before, you're listening to this for the first time, or me for the first time, I mean, then we're gonna pray and it's gonna be for you. But I'll tell you how it came about. Didn't really plan on sharing this, but I'll tell you how it came about. So as I was in prayer uh, for you all who are under this ministry, the Lord was sharing with me and pretty much just bringing to mind that you all are desiring more. You all are desiring more. And then I thought about, okay, well, I remember the exact moment in my life when I began to desire more, when I began to want more for God's kingdom, meaning I wanted to be more present in bringing about the manifestation of God's kingdom here on earth, because that's what we pray, right? We pray, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And so you can be an active participant in that where you can decide, I don't want to just be... I don't want to just be existing, right? I want to actually live the life that God has called me to live. And of course, that goes along with the plans in the future he has for you. That's Jeremiah 29, 11, where these, plan these plans that God has for you and the future that he has carved out for you, I mean, completely to the detail, mapped out for you, it, it, um, it comes into alignment with, and it's a part of God's bigger plan to redeem humanity. And it's actually very beautiful when you see it. I've taught on that many times. But what the Lord was showing me was that you guys are beginning to desire more. And that's a beautiful thing because I remember when that happened in my life, when I went just from, Lord, uh, meet my needs. Or, Lord, I need this to be done. I need you to help me get this. I need you to provide for me in this area. I need you to do X, Y, Z, right? I'm just desiring or seeking God's 
hand, not necessarily his heart. And when you're in that moment, you don't really realize that you're doing that because you're just focusing on what you need to get through your day to day. And so I get it. I've, I've been there. But then when you become somebody who is desiring more, you're desiring more of the things of God, you, you put God first. You put God's heart first, what's on his heart. You put God's kingdom first. And then you begin to desire things that really begin to expand, God, expand God's kingdom within the earth. You start desiring things like, Lord, help me to do something major for your kingdom. Help me to be a greater glory carrier for you in the earth. And that requires for God to move you up to another level. That requires for the Lord to trust you with more, right? But you begin to desire more. And so the Lord was showing me that, and or really telling me that about, it's actually something I heard versus saw, if I'm being very specific here. But the Lord was telling me that concerning you all who are under this ministry. And then, then he began to download into me three ways for you to know that your level is changing. And if these three ways, you, you, I go through them and you say, well, that's not me. Or maybe you go, you listen as I go through this and you say, um, well, I'm a babe in Christ. I just got saved. Well, it's okay because I'm going to tell you that no matter if you are a babe in Christ or if you have been walking with the Lord for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, doesn't really matter. This still applies to you. It's God who decides, decides when your season changes. It's God who decides that season is done for you. That time is over. And now you are shifted into this. Now you're going to this level. It doesn't matter how old you are. Absolutely not. So I want to say a prayer and then we're going to get into three signs your level is changing and then we're going to pray through them as well. So that way, if you're new here and you, you've made a commitment in your mind now that you're going to stick around, um, this is going to be for you. Absolutely. Because I cover every single person under this ministry and I believe that the Lord honors your diligence, your obedience, your faithfulness and us coming into agreement together. So I want to say a prayer. I just encourage you to come into agreement with me on this. Lord, I'm glad that you have sent every person to this message who needs to hear it. I'm thankful for them, Lord. I'm thankful that your spirit is always moving among us to be sure that every single person who seeks you, Every single person who's hungry for you, get what it is that they need to move further into the plan of God for their life specifically. Even those, what's beautiful about your spirit, God, is even those who do not seek you, even those who aren't hungry for them, but you want to catch their attention, you will place a message like this in front of them. I give you all the thanks, the honor, and the glory for that, God. Only you can do something like that. Only you can bring in lost sheep. Only you can reach people in a way that can't be, they can't be reached by anything else or anyone else. And so I thank you for sending them here. I ask that you will use this word that's going to go forth today, Lord, the word that you downloaded into my spirit to minister to them, to penetrate their mind and their heart in such a way that it ignites something in them. And that, that is the fire of God, that it ignites your fire within them so that they are not only knowing the desires that you placed in their heart, number one, they know it. Number two, they receive new desires. And number three, that spark that this word will cause within them will ignite something. And now they have the fire of God that is backing them and is causing them to rise above with such passionate and diligent seek with the, with the things of God. And now you've propelled them forward into their next level. I ask that you let this message do just that. And I always lower myself in humility, Lord, because I, I can take no credit. I can do nothing without you. I am nothing without you. And that goes for all of us. We are nothing without you. We can do nothing without you. And so I ask that you will speak mighty today, Lord. Let your spirit move forth in the lives of those who are listening let it penetrate. Let it start as an inner work and then move its way outward, even going on to those who are attached to them, their children, their family, those who they are praying for. Let it transform their life from the inside out as a ripple effect. I thank you in the name of Jesus 
for all that will come of this word, all of the fruit that will begin to be produced as they go forth after this message and study and seek you further and see these things happening in their life because your word says that it will. And I give you all the glory, all the praise, the honor, and the thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we're going to be talking about three signs your level is changing. And as I said, we're going to pray through these as well, because if you don't perceive that this is you, that's fine. The Lord has led you here for a reason. We're going to pray and this is going to be you. And then you're going to say, this is happening for me because the word never returns back void. You have to receive it for yourself and know that this is the word of the Lord for you today. Uh, so three signs your level is changing. The first sign is that you will begin to desire more, right? We were just talking about that, but I'm going to go even deeper into that. I want to, I want us to look carefully at Psalms or Psalm chapter 37, verse three through 11. We're going to be diving deep into the, the amplified classic edition version today. So, um, Psalm 37 verse three through 11, you could write that down or you could just listen depending on, um, what works best for you. So here it is. Trust, lean on, rely on, and be confident in the Lord and do good. So shall you dwell in the land and feed surely on his faithfulness and truly you shall be fed. And I like this Amplified Classic Edition because it's very detailed. It doesn't just say trust in the Lord and do good because I'm reading from the, I have my ESV up here as well. And it says, trust in the Lord and do good, dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. But if you read it from the Amplified Classic Edition, it's a lot more detailed. It says, trust, lean on, rely on and be confident. And so there's three it's, it's three words that are very detailed. So you, you not only just trust in God, right? But you lean on God. You rely on God. And then you are confident in the Lord. You're confident that he will do what he said he will do. You're confident that he's leading you down the right path, not into death and destruction. And so when you're leaning on God, you're confident that he's not going to drop you. You're confident that he's not going to just let you, like if he's led you this far, he's not going to leave you. And so I want you to imagine, which he is your strong tower, but I want you to imagine actually the Lord, right? Imagine the Lord standing right beside you and you not having the strength to really carry yourself through or see the vision through fully, but you're leaning on God. You're leaning on him and he's, he's strong. He's sturdy. He is your strong tower. And so he's not going to back away so that you fall. He's always going to be right there in step with you. Can you see that for yourself? So you lean on him, you rely on him for your strength because he sustains you. And then you're confident that he's always going to be right there. You're confident that he's going to carry you through, but that's not it because it says, and do good. And so you do good. And then it says, then you shall dwell in the land and feed surely on his faithfulness and truly you shall be fed. Let's go down to verse four. It says, delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires and secret petitions of your heart. And there it is, because we're talking about how the first sign your level is changing is that you will begin to desire more. You're going to desire more of the things of God. You're going to desire putting God first, right? Psalm, not Psalm, uh, Matthew 633 is going to become one of your life verses, right? You're going to be putting God first and the things of God first and his righteousness. And then you're going to see him add all of these things to you. Then you're going to see him do exceedingly abundantly above anything you could ask or think. And yes, we do quote a lot of scripture here because that is how you're going to see. That's exactly how you're going to see the signs, wonders, and miracles of God in your life only through God's word. So it says, delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires and secret petitions of your heart. Now, some of you want to say, okay, well, I delight in the Lord. And some of you may be saying that you say, I love the Lord. I delight in the Lord. Okay. But I want to, I want to go a little bit deeper for you because now the Lord or the spirit of God is bringing to mind. And I don't have this in my notes, but I do want to take you there briefly Give me a moment. Okay. I want to take you to Psalm chapter one, verse one through three, because remember we first started out 
at Psalm 37 verse 4. It says, just to refresh your memory again, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires and secret petitions of your heart. But that's in direct alignment. Those of you who know your word, and if not, it's fine. We're going to go there with Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, where it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of of the Lord and on his law does he meditate day and night and you know that if you go down to verse 3 it says then that man is like a tree right he's like a tree that's planted by the streams of water and he's gonna yield his fruit and its season and it says his leaf does not wither and all that he does he prospers so when you become somebody who delights yourself in the Lord or in other words delight yourself in the law of the Lord because the Lord is his word you become somebody who prospers in all that you do. Not only that, going back to Psalm 37, verse four, he will give you the desires and secret petitions of your heart. And so the more, it's as simple as that, the more that you delight yourself in the Lord, which is getting in his word, that's how you delight in the, the, the Lord, is that you read the word of God. You know, the Lord even says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Well, how would you know what that is? How would you know how to do that if you're not reading his word. But I want to dig deeper into what that word petition means because it says he'll give you the desires and secret petitions of your heart. And we know many people quote this scripture a lot, this very specific scripture, verse four. I've quoted it because it's very true. It's beautiful. And it lets us know God's going to give you the desires of your heart. But I want to break it down more so that you see God doesn't just give you any desire of your heart, but he gives you the desires that he has placed in your heart, your heart. So first I want to dig into what that word petition means. Petition means to make or present a formal request to a court. So I want you to see, see this. You have a desire in your heart and it's a desire the Lord has put in your heart. And then you go in prayer and you make your petition to the court of heaven and it's a secret petition, right? It's not something, these are things that are, it's only in your heart. You haven't shared it with anyone, maybe yet, right? You haven't, this is just something that is just so deep within your heart. Maybe you even think it's far away. You just think this is something that I've been desiring in my heart, but it's so far away. But no, the word of God says, when you delight yourself in the Lord or in the law of the Lord, he will give you the desires and even the secret petitions of your heart, the secret things that only you and God know that's in your heart. And it's a desire God put there because it glorifies him. That's how you know that it's a God desire. Because many of you may say, I've, I've seen this a lot, where a lot of you may say, well, how do I know that it's a desire that God put in my heart? Well, you, here's a quick thing that you can do to examine the desires of your heart. Does it glorify God? Will it bring glory to his name? Will it lift his name up high? Or does it glorify you? Is it, is, it a, is it a selfish desire? Does it glorify you? Does it bring any glory to the name of God? Does it expand his kingdom agenda within the earth? Or is it all about you? That'll let you know right then and there where that desire originated from. And then you could weed them out like that. And you may have to even sit and peel back the layers. Because, oh, oh, okay, I was, sometimes I'll say things and it'll kind of drag me off into something else. I'll, I'll just say this. You may have to sit and peel back the layers because a lot of times we could say that this is a desire that came from God and it's in my heart because it's going to glorify God's kingdom. But then why do you want to glorify? I'm just going to go a little bit deep, deep on you here. Why do you want to glorify God's kingdom? Is it for you? Because there are some people who are Christian. I just have to put this out there who will do things that is, in fact, expanding God's kingdom within the earth, but they're doing it just to be seen. We have a clear example of this when it comes to the Pharisees and Sadducees, where they would do all of, they would pray for people in the streets, right? They gather in, in circles and they pray for people, but they were doing it just to be seen. So you see how they were doing an act that could be seen as righteous. They were doing an act that could be seen as, you know, living up rightly. But then it, the reason behind it was just to be seen. It was for own vain and selfish uh, deeds, 
Let me just put it that way. And so you may have to sit and really pull back the layers on this. Is it really going to glorify God or is it just going to glorify me? Or am I attempting to do good deeds and the name of glorifying God, but really it's because it's something that I just want for me. It's a, that's a whole other message. But petition means to make or present a formal request to the court. And so even those secret things in your heart that you haven't told anyone about, it's just between you and the Lord. As you delight yourself in his word, he'll bring those things to pass. To bring those things to pass. But we're going to go down to verse 5. Again, we're in Psalm 37, verse 5. Yes. Commit your way to the Lord. Roll and repose each care of your load on him. So it's, I like, this is why I like the Amplified Classic Edition because it's very descriptive. I want you to imagine as exactly as it says, you know, commit your way to the Lord. But then imagine you have this heavy load and you, you're just carrying it around. It feels like the weight of the world is on your shoulder. It literally says, just roll and repose each care of your load on him. Just roll your load on him. He'll take it. He'll, lit he'll literally take it from you. And then it just, it feels like, and I can tell you when, when that happens for you, when you're carrying around this heavy load and you just decide that you're gonna release it to God, it feels like this weight is lifted off you. And then you look back and you wonder why you were carrying that anyway. And then you realize a lot of that stuff, it was completely outside of your control anyway. Completely outside of your control. There are some things that you can step in and it's a part of your assignment to take on. But then there's a lot of things that's completely outside of your control. The devil hopes that you continue to try to carry because then you never put the load on Jesus. You never cast it on the Lord. There are some things that are completely outside of your control that today for it, you just have to release it to the Lord and let him take over because nothing was ever going to come up, come of it anyway with you trying to make it happen in your own mind or power. But it says, commit your way to the Lord, roll and repose each care of your load on him. Trust. Then here it is again, lean on him, rely on him and be confident in him also in him. And he will bring it to pass. He'll bring it to pass. What is he bringing to pass? The desire that he put in your heart. This is a, this is a direct step-by-step -step instruction on how to walk in alignment with God to bring that desire he's placed in your heart to pass. And I have to say this because some people will say, maybe not you because you're here, but some people will say, well, I've had this desire the Lord has put in my heart and it's been this many years and I haven't seen it come to pass. Well, here you go. Psalm 37, 3 through 11, step-by-step -step instruction on how to walk in alignment with God for him to bring that desire to pass. And we already talked about if it's a desire that glorifies him or you. You have to um, really assess yourself to determine what category it falls under. But here it is. Line upon line outlines exactly how to walk with him to bring that to pass. Then it says, verse 6, and he will make your uprightness and right standing with God, go forth as the light and your justice and right as the shining sun of the noonday. Verse seven, be still and rest in the Lord. Wait for him and patiently lean yourself upon him. It constantly talks about leaning on him, leaning on him. Why does it say that? Because many times the Lord will place a desire in our heart. Again, we're talking about three signs your level is changing. First sign, you will begin to desire more. A lot of times the Lord will place a desire in our heart and then immediately we take we take on the entire load of that thing and we start thinking, well, I got to I got to do this, got to do this, need this much money, need this many people. This has to all happen this way. And we just take on the entire mental load, the entire physical load, and it just completely, I'll put it this way, you just completely push God out of the picture trying to carry it all on your own. It says, lean on him. And then it's, it's repeating it over and over again. Why? Because your strength is going to come from him. You can't, you, it's impossible for you to bring it about on your own. If God gave you that desire, then God is going to help you bring it to pass. And I would even go as far to say that if you were somebody who has one of those desires, and you're, you constantly find yourself trying to do it on your own, not leaning on God, and then 
you're feeling the weight of that, I would encourage you to just sit and as I said, peel back the layers to really see where did that desire come from? Why do you feel the need to carry it on your own? Is it because it is a desire that's gonna glorify you or is it gonna glorify God? Because I'm gonna tell you, there's a different kind of um, peace that comes with a desire that God has put in your heart. Because you'll, be, you'll become somebody that says, not by my might or power, but by God's spirit. You'll become somebody who says, God's going to bring it to pass. You know those people who say, God is my CEO, or they say, God is spearheading this, this thing. God is, this is all going to happen by the Lord's hand. If something goes wrong, you're not afraid. Come on, this is the entirety of Psalm 112. He's not afraid when he hears bad news, but instead he will wait until he triumphs upon his adversary. This is the entirety of Psalm 112. We've been on that for quite some time now because it's, I believe that's the the, uh, scripture for many of you, the chapter for many of you. So you become somebody who has a different kind of peace when it comes to the things God has put in your heart, because even if it takes a long time, you know that God said it, he will do it. God put it in your heart. He's going to help you bring it to pass. You're leaning on God and he is your strength. You're drawing strength from him. You're able to endure like nobody else. Like you can stand the test of time like nobody else. I'm telling you, there are many things the Lord had me start, but because I knew God put that desire in my heart. I knew that it was he who called me to it and it took time. Absolutely. But I endured. There are many things that I seen come to pass in my life because if you know it's a different kind of faith you have when you know it's God when you're when you're not doubting so that's why I said some of you may need to sit and peel back the layers and see where did that desire come from and if you know that it came from God apply Psalm 37 3 through 11 lean on him it says wait for him and patiently we're still in verse 7 wait for him and patiently lean yourself upon him patiently lean yourself upon him Fret not yourself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. This is so crucial because when you're enduring, it's easy to look in someone else's lane and see what they're doing and say, well, there, I know that they were doing wicked deeds. I know that they were scamming. I know that they were doing fraudulent deals. I know that they're not walking with the Lord. Number one, how do you know that for sure? You don't know that. Only God knows their heart. And number two, Fret not yourself because of him who prospers in his way. Don't even worry about it. Don't even fret it. Because the man who brings wicked devices to pass, because of the man who brings yeah, wicked devices to pass. And it says, verse 8, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Again, fret not yourself. It tends only to evil doing. Verse 9, for evil doers shall be cut off, but those who wait and hope and look for the Lord and the end shall inherit the earth. The ESV puts it this way. It says the meek shall inherit the earth. But what it's telling us, what I really want you to grasp, I say this by by the spirit of God, is that you don't have to look over into someone else's lane and see what they're doing and say, well, I started when they start. Why am I not? Why am I not far ahead or whatever? Only God knows the true intent and heart of a person. And if they're really doing wicked deeds, because some of you may say, well, they, I really know this person has done wicked deeds. I really, I've seen it with my own eyes. You really know that this person is not walking with the Lord. Okay, you, don't, you still don't have to fret yourself. You still don't have to look over into their lane and, and observe where they're going, where they're not going. It says, verse 9, evildoers shall be cut off. They're going to be cut off. Who does it? The Lord, not you. You don't have to check back up on them, right? Joseph didn't have to check back up on his brothers to see where they were at because they threw him in a pit. He knew where they were, where they were at. They were in Canaan at the time, struggling from severe famine. And just as the Lord said it would happen, they had to come to him to get food. And so you don't have to check back up on these people. It's leave it up to the Lord. It says, evil doers shall be cut off. Verse 10 for yet a little while and the evil doers will be no more though you look with care where they used to be they will not be found though you look with care where they used to be they will not be found and so if you do find yourself looking back and i'm talking about years down the line they will not be found and what's interesting is that people think that they can do things with vain intent they can do things 
um, just to receive out of being selfish, but it can only go on for so long before the true intentions of their heart is brought to the light. You know that the have you ever heard someone say, whatever's done in the dark will come to light? Well, it's very true. It's very true. But for you, light dawns in the darkness. Why? Because you're living upright. That's Psalm 112 again. I believe that's Psalm 112 verse 3. But I'll say this. I remember <coughs> many of you know this, but then there are a lot of you who are new here. There's actually more of you who don't know this than those of you who do. So before I was in ministry, before I became full-time in ministry, I was doing coaching and um, I seen the same thing happen when I entered into coaching and left coaching and then entered into ministry and now here I am now in ministry a couple years later, a few years later actually. So I'll go back to coaching and it's some of you, <laughs> some of you actually followed me from coaching, which I'm glad, if you're listening to this, I'm glad, praise God. So. And I give God all the glory, by the way, but I will say this. When I first entered into coaching, there were a lot of people who I would communicate with because I was new in the coaching industry and I would communicate with them. Some of them were actually way further ahead than I was. They knew a lot more. They had a lot more clients. They, they were a lot further along, I'll say that. But then when I left the coaching industry, that was after quite a few years of doing coaching, there were some of the people who I would actually lean on for help. I, would, I mean, I would, they would, I would go to them as a mentor where they were no longer doing it anymore. Not because they didn't want to, because it just went down. Their, their business just went down, right? But I know specifically, I can't speak for anyone else. I know specifically that the Lord had called me into that at that time in my life. Same thing with ministry, because I don't ever go anywhere. I don't ever start anything. I know this is a word for somebody. I don't ever go anywhere. I don't ever start anything unless the Lord to tells me to do it and the Lord tells me to go there. And because of that, there has not been a thing that I have done that hasn't pro prospered. So same thing happened with ministry where I remember one person specifically who I would communicate with where we started our ministry around the same time. And then I went back to look at look for that person and it was nowhere to be found. Now, that's what's going on with that is between them and the Lord. But what I will say is let's go back to Psalm 37, verse 10 through 11. And let's reread what it says, because I'm, I want to paint a picture for you here that I want you to really cap, capture the revelation of this. So listen to this. For yet a little while, and the evildoers will be no more. Though you look with care where they used to be, they will not be found. But the meek, in the end, in the end, shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundant peace. So we have to also look at what that word meek means. That word meek means gentle, quiet, easily imposed, humility. It's like a quiet strength. I want you to imagine it as that. And so it really boils down to the true reason of why a person is doing a thing. Because in the end, it will all come to pass what's really supposed to come of it in the end. And so do you see it? Those of you who are listening to this under the sound of my voice, because I'm speaking to you specifically, even if you have never heard of me before, but you're here for the first time, this is for you too. Do you, I want you to see it, how God has been with you all along. God has been with you all along. And so you'll know it because at the right time, he will plant very specific desires in your heart and God will put them there. They won't be yours. God will put them there and you'll know it because something will come of it. And then when it seems like, right, when it seems like nothing's come of it, when it seems like you're looking in someone else's lane, which it shouldn't be and they're prospering, you're not, but you know, they're doing evil deeds. You endure, you have the strength to endure. You have the faith to stay there, which we're going to talk about that in a moment too. You endure, you have strength. It's almost like superhuman strength because it is. It's supernatural. It's coming from the Lord. The Lord is your strength. You don't fall out the race because things are hard, because you've heard bad news. You pull your strength from God and you stand in, in times and situations that will just knock other people out, that will just blow other people away. You're still standing. And so that's how you know it's from God, by the way. 
And then also it glorifies his name. It glorif it brings glory to him. You also know that desires from God because these are things that you didn't desire before, but now you do. You know, you may not have desired to put God's kingdom first, put his righteousness first, or even do anything to expand God's kingdom within the earth, but now you do. You didn't desire before to bring glory to God's name, but now you do. That's how you know it's from God. It's not a fleshly thing, not by, not by any means. And so also, because we're talking about, again, we're still in Psalm 37. If you read it from Psalm 37, verse 11, in the ESV, as I said, it says, the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. And so a, only a person, and many of you will understand this, only a person who's truly meek in spirit will desire such righteous things of God. Evil doers do not. They don't desire righteous things or putting God first or his kingdom first, not at their core. At their core, they're only concerned with self. They're only concerned with self, with self. And at the end, it will be brought to the light. It will be made evident. I believe that's the right word I want to use. And so, and because of this, the word says, soon you'll look, from the, look for them and they won't be found. And so you must do, we must do all things unto the Lord. And you can become that person. If you can become somebody who does all things unto the Lord. You'll see God do things for you that don't happen for other people. And you'll see yourself stand the test of time. You'll see yourself have almost like superhuman strength and ability. Why? Because it's not coming from you. It's coming from King Jesus. Jesus is your strength. He will sustain you. Things that take other people out, you will endure. And then you'll see yourself come out on top every single time. That happens to the person who does all things for, for, for the Lord. Doesn't matter if you're doing a very small job or a large job, you do it for the Lord and you'll see yourself come out on top every single time. And so the second sign, because we're talking about signs that you are going to the next level, your level is changing. Also, before I even go into that, I want to say a quick prayer because the Lord did instruct me to pray through this with those of you who are here for the first time. And even if you're not, I want you to just come into agreement with me quickly on this. Lord, thank you for sending them to this message. Thank you for revealing these signs that they're going to the next level. I know that if they're here and they're listening to this, that you have another level for them. And it's ready for them. It's ready for them. All they have to do is walk through the door. I ask, Lord God, that you will ignite something in, in them. In the name of Jesus, the name above every other name. Place more desires in their heart. Good, godly, righteous desires. Many of them are thinking, I don't have any desires the Lord has put in my heart. I don't know what it is that God wants me to do. Lord, hear our prayer today and plant good, godly, righteous desires in their heart that glorify you and ignite a fire in them so that they have such passionate desire and ability to do that which it is you put in their heart to do. We give you thanks in advance for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the second sign that your level is changing is that your faith will grow. Your faith will increase. And what that just means, we're going to go, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into it here. What that just means is that things that you used to believe for back in the day, maybe even last week, you're believing for bigger now because you're believing for the bigger desires God has put in your heart. So when God puts desires in your heart, your faith is going to match up with those desires. He's going to increase you in faith so that you now have the faith to go after that which you desire now. And so your faith will grow. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to read it to you from the Amplified Classic Edition, but I'm also going to pull up my ESV in case I want to um, compare a few compare a few verses. Okay. This is from the Amplified Classic Edition. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 tells us, but without faith, it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists 
and he is a rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. The reason I like the Amplified Classic edition is because that word satisfactory is there. It says, again, but without faith it's impossible to please and be satisfactory with him. It means, it means God is satisfied with you. Why is, he now, why is he now satisfied with you? Because you are a person of faith. Do you know that's why, many of you do know, that's why he was satisfied with Abraham? That's why he's called the father of faith. He looks at you and he says, I'm satisfied with this person. I'm very sad. They have faith in me. They have faith in my word. There is nothing, there's no fiery dart that can be launched at their mind that will cause doubt or fear. It bounces right off of them. It bounces right off of them. You know, there are a lot of times where the enemy will try to put a thought in my mind. And I know it's a fiery dart that was launched at me and it bounces right off. Absolutely. It's like a shield, which it is a shield. It's a supernatural shield of favor and power of the spirit of God, where the enemy will dart, uh, launch a fiery dart in my mind. And I know immediately it's a lie. I know it's a lie. And so instead of being taken under by it, instead of going into spiritual warfare, I shut it down at the door. And that's a lie. That's a lie. And the same thing will happen with imaginations. You know, the devil will have an entire movie playing out in your mind with ending scene credits and all. In all, you have to recognize that it's a lie and completely shut it down. Just like a TV, turn it off. Just turn it off. You don't have to entertain it. You do not have to entertain it. You know, I believe it was Cindy Trim, Dr. Cindy Trim, who said that spiritual warfare is the counsel of the human mind by any spirit other than the spirit of God. And so anytime you are coming into agreements with thoughts and imaginations, Come on, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. With anything that is not the voice of God or the Spirit of God, how do you know what that is? You read the Word of God. It is warfare. The enemy is waging war on your mind, and you don't even know it. You don't even know it. That's a really deep thing when you, when you begin to understand this. But then it says, because we're, we're still at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Then it says, for whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he's a rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. And so you must become somebody who's willing to seek it out. You don't just sit and listen to words like this, but you go into your secret, the secret time, quiet, uh, the quiet time into the Lord in the secret place, and then you seek it out. You become somebody who you can't, it's not enough to just hear the word of God. You got to experience God for yourself, which yes, hearing the word of God will increase you in faith, but then it'll, you'll increase so much in faith to where now it's propelling you to move forward into greater dimensions and realms of God. But then number two, it's pushing you to seek it out. As it says, those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. And so you can't just sit and hear words, the word of God like this. You can't just sit and hear messages like this. You got to leave this message and then go seek it out. Then go experience the signs, the wonders and miracles of God for yourself. It reminds me of the, the woman with the issue of blood and all the people who would, who would come to where Jesus was when he was performing miracles, when he was here on earth during his ministry, they couldn't just hear the news that Jesus was in town. They had to seek it out. They had to go seek it out. So you got to say to yourself, I got to experience Jesus for myself. I got to experience a touch of God for myself. I got to experience God for myself. And then I want to take you to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29 to 34. Listen to this. This one I'm actually going to read from uh, the ESV. It says, let me make sure that's the right. Yes. Okay. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29 through 34. It says, by faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land. But the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. This is really an explanation of the powerful things that happen for a person who has faith. It even says, again, we go back up to Hebrews chapter 
um, 11 verse 4, I believe it was, verse 6, God is satisfied with that person. God is satisfied with that person. And when God is satisfied with you, there are things that happen for you that don't happen for other people. It says, verse 31, by faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. You know, it takes faith to be obedient. It takes faith to be obedient. And I know some of you may, say, may be saying, no, that's not true because, because you can be obedient and not have faith. That's not entirely true. And I'm, I'm going to explain to you how. Because let's just say the Lord tells you to do something, right? And you're obedient and you do it. You're not doing it because you have faith. And so eventually you won't withstand the test of time when your faith is tested because it's not rooted in any kind or when your obedience is tested. Let me put it that, that way, because it's not rooted in any kind of faith. You're just going to fall away. You're just going to fall away. And so you may fake it for some time, like you actually believe the word of God. But then when fiery trials come, when the winds of life come, there are some people who don't stand because they don't have their, their faith isn't rooted in the word of God. Maybe it's rooted in self. Maybe it's rooted in some podcast they heard. Who knows? Who knows? But you can only be obedient to the word of God for so long to where um, without faith. For so long to where it's going to require a testing of your faith. And if there's no faith there then the test will be failed. But that won't be you because you're, you're here and you're listening to this and you're getting the strong teaching on faith. And I believe the Spirit of God is working and moving even now in you and increasing you in faith. And again, we're talking about three signs that you're going to the next level. Second sign is that you will increase in faith. You'll grow in faith. Okay. Verse 32 again. We're in Hebrews chapter 11, moving on to verse 32. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japheth, of David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith, through faith, conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. This all ha happens for the person of faith. It's a very powerful thing when you grasp it. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Verse 34. Quench the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. This is what ha these are the things that happen for a person of faith. And so how do you know? Again, we're talking about three signs your level is changing. Well, your faith will grow. Your faith will grow and it will increase. And because of that, you'll be able to do more. More will happen for you. More happens for a person of faith than for a person who doesn't have any faith at all. But then we're gonna break it down a little bit further. More happens for a person of great faith than for a person of little faith. And so there's levels to faith. Even within faith, there's levels to faith. If you actually, I encourage you to read the entirety of Hebrews chapter 11 because it goes way more in depth than what we did today. Way more in depth of the people of old and the kind of faith they had and what happened as a result of it. And I believe that that's happening for you as in an increase in faith whether you've been under this ministry for a while or you just came across this video today, the Lord is going to increase you in faith because the word of the Lord will never return back void. And we spoke it over you and the name of Jesus, the name above every other name. And so you become somebody who can't just sit and listen to words like this. You got to experience God for yourself. That's a person of faith, right? You become somebody who like Abraham can't just hear the word of the Lord where he says in Genesis chapter 12 verse 3 go from your father and mother's house and then i'll make a nation out of you no you can't just hear the word of the lord and sit on it you got to experience god for yourself no matter what it takes you got to get up and go you got to get up and go you become somebody like ruth right who can't just sit and understand that naomi and even their husbands right once served this incredible god well clearly for naomi she still served the lord can't say the same about their husbands because they brought them to the land of Moab and that's a whole other story. Actually, I taught on that in the Regeneration series, but we're not going there. But you can't become somebody like Ruth, right, who has sat under Naomi and heard about the God that they served and even the land they came from, which was Bethlehem, Bethlehem Judah, 
And then not say to yourself, I got to experience this God for myself. I got to experience, I can't just hear about the stories. I got to experience this God for myself. That's a person of faith. And there's things that happen for a person like that that don't happen for people who don't have faith. And then there's things that happen for a person of large faith, great faith, that doesn't happen for people of small faith. faith. And so we're talking about, again, three signs that you're going to the next level. Three signs your level is changing. The third sign is that your language will change. How you speak will change. The way you speak will begin to change and this is reflective of that which you think and believe. And so when you begin to think differently, your beliefs about certain things begin to change. And when your belief changes, you change. And when you change, that which you say changes. And when that which you say change, your life changes. And that's just how it works. And so at this point, when this happens for you, at this point, you become somebody who you can't just, you've seen too much, right? You've seen too much about the Lord that where you've seen too much in your life and in other people's lives that God has done for them and about God, that you can't just sit and not experience God for yourself. You also can't doubt God. You can't doubt God. No matter what you see happening in the natural, no matter what you see happening around you, no matter what weapons you see trying to form, trying to prosper, which they shall never form, you would never doubt God. You'd never doubt what his word said. You've seen too much. You've experienced too much. You have developed and went deeper and that much more depth in your relationship with God. You, have, you know too much and you've seen too much. And you know the word of God. And that's, for that person, that's a dangerous person in the realm of the spirit. And so at this point, you've seen too much. You don't doubt God. And so not only has God placed the desire in your heart for more, but you also have the faith to receive it. And not only do you have the faith to receive it, you're now speaking the word of God over your situation. And so your language, your language is now changed to reflect that which God has shown you. And for that person, nothing is impossible. I'm going to prove it to you. I want to read to you Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. This one we're going to actually read from the ESV. Mm. Matthew chapter 7, verse 20. Okay. It tells us, he said to them, he as in talking about Jesus, he said to them, because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing will be impossible for you. What does it take? Faith, the grain of a mustard seed. We just talked about that. First, your, your, God will put more desires in your heart. He'll put bigger desires in your heart. Second, you'll increase in faith. Third, your language will change. Then we have Jesus confirming it by saying, if you have faith, like a grain of mustard seed, you will say, you'll speak, this is your language changing. You'll say to this mountain, from move, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. And so when your level is changing, your language will begin to change. You'll begin to speak differently. You'll see the mountain rising up, whether that's a mountain of debt, whether there's a mountain of medication, whether that's a mountain of li a literal people coming up against you with words of accusation. I know there are many of you who may say, well, you know, I'm ex I have experiences on the job or you have experienced it on the job where you've seen people actually come up against you accusing you of false things. Doesn't have to be on the job. It could be anybody. It could be any mountain. It could be anything you consider a mountain in your life that's coming up against you. But you start to speak differently when, when it happens. You don't, you're not the person who says, here the enemy comes again attacking me. I need, okay, I, I was gonna, I'm gonna go there. You may say, I need my prayer warriors. And that's, that's, there's a time and a place for that. But then you come to, you, when you become somebody who God increases in faith and your language changes, there's certain things you don't have to do, right? 
you, you, you just speak and you legislate from your prayer chair and it comes to nothing. It comes to nothing. That happens for a person who God has moved you up a level. God has moved you up a level. And so because you've moved up a, le a level, your authority increases and your jurisdiction increases. It expands. It expands. And so you speak differently when God moves you up a level. I want you to imagine like a, like a, um, a police officer versus the mayor or the mayor versus the president, right? Or the mayor versus the governor. There's different levels to authority and jurisdiction. And so each of those roles, no matter who it is, they speak differently according to their authority and their jurisdiction. And so if the mayor were to move up a level to governor, then the words they would say would be different. They would speak differently because they know they're walking with another level of authority. And so when God moves you up a level, your language changes. You know that this is coming against me, but I can just speak to it. I can just speak differently. I can just speak the word of God and it must come to nothing. Jesus says, he says, nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing will be impossible for you. And so... These are three signs your level is changing. So I want to say a prayer for those of you who are under the sound of my voice. And this is for those of you who have been sitting under this ministry for a while, or you just found this message today. And I don't believe it's by accident. I don't believe that you've listened to this by accident. And I say this by the Spirit of God, that these three, three things are happening for you. Why? Because the word of the Lord never returns back void. And so as you grab hold of, hold of these scriptures, you receive it for yourself, they're going to ignite something within you. What is that? The power of God, the fire of God, the anointing of God. These are all released into your life by way of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Actually, when Jesus left to go sit at the right hand of the Father, he said, I'm going to leave you with a friend. And that is the Holy Spirit. And that's who we have dwelling among us today. That's who releases the anointing into your life. That too is your wonderful counselor. The Holy Spirit released the fire of God. We learn about this with Jeremiah. He says, literally, it's like fire shut up in my bones. What is that? It's the Holy Spirit igniting something within him to where he can't just sit still and not do the will of the Lord. There's a fire within him to get up and go and do, it, do what it is that God said do. I pray that that comes upon you now in the name of Jesus. I pray that the anointing of God as Psalm 23 begins to saturate you that your cup now runs over, that you have everything that you need. Everything that you need is being magnetized to you now. It comes to you now. What is attracting it? The anointing of God. The anointing of God, the favor of God has formed a shield around you that works as if it's a pull. It's a gravitational pull for all that it is that God has said is yours. All that it is that is yours by your divine right. All that it is that you need for your assignment here within the earth realm to expand the kingdom of God, to bring about glory to his name. It shows up right in time, on time, on time, because we serve an on time God. He's never too late. Never too late. I pray in the name of Jesus, the name above every other name, that it all shows up. The people shows up right on time. The divine connections. Anyone that is not sent by God is removed now in the name of Jesus. The resources show up right on time. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory, all for your name. Begin to reveal yourself to them, Jesus, on another level as you take them to this next level. Begin to plant your desires in their heart and help them decipher which is from you and which is not. Begin to increase them in faith as the people of old, as we learn in Hebrews chapter 11, so that they may do mightier things all for your glory, all for your kingdom, God. Begin to reveal your word to them, Lord. Peel back the layers of the scriptures so that now their faith is increased and their language has changed. They now speak differently. And because of that, their life has changed. I thank you, Lord, for igniting something powerful in them today. And we give you all the glory and the thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm glad that you're here and that you've received this word today. And I know that it's something that, as I said, ignited something within you. 
Absolutely. Without a doubt. I say that by the Spirit of God. And so I'm glad that you're here and you listen to this. You listen to this. But I will say this. I encourage you to not just listen. As I said, I encourage you to allow what was ignited within you to really just grow so that it pushes you to become somebody that says, I can't just hear that word and not go experience God for myself. I can't just hear that word and sit on it and not pursue and seek out, as it said, seek it out for myself. I got to become somebody who experiences God's signs, wonders, and miracles in my life. And then I can be a testimony to others. And now it's a, it's a ripple effect. Now it's a ripple effect to those who are attached to you. Can you see that's exactly what's happening with this ministry? That it's a ripple effect. And so I'm glad that you're here and you're listening to that because I believe that it, listening to this, because I believe that it ignited something within you. So I will say this, that if you want further prayer, that you can email in, if you click the contact link in the description, you can email in a prayer request. You can also email in a testimony. We love to celebrate with you and we love to pray with you and over you concerning the will of God. And here is what we believe, that as we pray the will of God for you and come into agreement with you, God can do far more for you than anything you ever even ask for, right? There's many times where we ask for one thing, God gives us another thing, but it's better than what we thought, right? Or something completely different than what we thought, but it's what we needed. We go to God and present our petitions and our requests to God, and we think it's something that we want or we need in that time, but God knows what you need better than you know what you need. He knows what He knows what will be best for you better than we know. Can you trust that? Can you have faith in that alone? And so as we come into agreement with you in prayer, if you're sending in a prayer request, believe and expect that God will move because he will. And then you'll have a testimony and then we'll be, cel- we'll be celebrating with you. And I can't wait to read it, whether that's your prayer request or your uh, testimony. And so that that option is below along with many other things, many other resources. There's courses there. There is mentorship. We have recently within the past, I would say a few months or so, opened it up for you to partner with the ministry. And many of you have already. And I'm going to tell you at whichever level the Lord leads you to partner with us at, we're going to send you something, whether that's a gift through email or a physical gift, we're going to send you something. If you partner with us at the third level, just to let you know, that's where you get the physical gift. But at any level, we're going to send you something to honor you because you have honored us. And actually, that leads me into Philippians chapter 4, verse 15 through 19, where Paul talks about, he talks about sowing into ministers and partnering with ministers. He says, listen, you church, your church here at the Church of Philippi is the only church that partner with me and giving and receiving. And he says, not that I need it because the Lord will take care of me regardless, but I care about the fact that that goes to your credit. That's going to go to your credit because you have sought out the Lord in such a way that you want to be, you want to honor God in his kingdom. You want to put him first in his righteousness. Come on, that's Matthew 6, 33. Then the Lord will make sure that all of your needs are added on to you because you've taken care of God's house. He will take care of your, your house. There's many other scriptures within the word of God that are in in alignment with Philippians 4, 15 through 19. Paul was saying that goes to your account. And so I just want you to know that as you become somebody who has a heart posture of one who just wants to seek first God's kingdom, somebody who wants to seek God's righteousness, meaning you're seeking it out. You're somebody who wants to learn and know how to walk uprightly in God. And then you put first God's kingdom. He's going to make sure that you're taken care of. This is the Luke 638 principle, whereas you give, it should be given back to you with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. But then I also want you to know that in second Corinthians chapter nine, verse six, Paul also talks about this. You know, when you really read the, the two books of Corinthians, Paul talks a lot about seed time and harvest, but he talks about this where he says, listen, again, second Corinthians chapter nine, verse six, he says, those who sow bountifully will reap bountifully, and those who sow sparingly will reap sparingly. And I have to share this with you because I can't do it, and I can't, I can't follow this principle and see what it's done for my life and not share it with you. Where, when I, okay, and I'll, I'll share this with you, but then I'll, um, I'll leave it at that. When I first learned about this, I think it was about maybe quite a few years, maybe about three years ago, maybe three or four years ago. 
um, I was somebody who just decided, you know what, I want to make sure that I'm putting God, God first and how can I be that person? How can I say that I'm putting God first in the things of God when I'm not, I'm spending more time, right? I'm spending more energy. I'm spending my resources on more of the things of this world and not on God's kingdom. What is that really saying about me? And so then I became someone who said, okay, I want to start sowing into the things of God. And then the minister I was sitting under at that time, I'm not going to say any names. I was sowing seed into that minister. And as the Lord began to grow me in faith, as the Lord began to grow me in understanding, then I started sowing larger seeds. And I'm going to say it's not a coincidence only because I don't believe in coincidences. I don't believe in coincidences that the moment I started sowing bountifully only because God increased me in faith first, then I began to enlarge by the spirit and power of God. Why? Because it was working the principles of God. And the same thing will happen for you. The same thing will happen for you. And so I'll leave that for you there. I encourage you to read the word of God, study God's financial principles within his word. I've done, I have an entire playlist on it, by the way. I encourage you to listen to it in your own time. But then you'll see, as you work the word of God, you'll see the word of God work for you. And then you're also going to increase in faith. And it's a very beautiful thing to see because there's things that happen for that person that don't happen for other people. And what's interesting is that you only really understand it when you're experiencing it for yourself and you see it happening before your eyes. And so on that note, know that I'm always praying for you. I love you all. And I will talk with you in the next message. Mm -hmm.